you have so much energy that will liberate out that will liberate everyone. So you would want to continue every act of ibadah that you do. You would want to have it with the same excitation. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everyone. You're all welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Rukai Muhammad Salisu. And if you're new, you are highly welcome. You would want to stick around for a bit, check out the rest of the videos on the channel and just press that subscribe button. Yes, that one just below the video and ring the notification bell beside it. So you get so you get notifications whenever I upload a new video. This is episode three of my Ramadan series. So I will be talking about the little things that we tend to miss out in Ramadan and which really matter. So we'll be starting off with taking rest. There is so much going on in Ramadan. Yes, there's so much going on. We have a lot of things we want to do this. There are a lot of things we do in Ramadan. We recharge our iman, we rejuvenate our we rejuvenate ourselves and regain energy. And also, we want to get closer to Allah, so we are always doing from this to that, from this to that. Just a quick question. Is the excitement, the zeal, and the enthusiasm you had at the beginning of this month equal to the one you still have right now? I mean, just compare it. Is it reducing or increasing, or is it still the same? If it's still the same, good for you. If it's increasing, congratulations. But if it is decreasing, you might really want to take a break. Because when you do something too much, whatever it is that you do, too much of it, you tend to want out, you stress, you stress yourself out, and you just lose interest in it. And you would want to keep that excitation that we had, all that energy and the excitation that we had at the beginning of this month, we would want to carry it out all through this month. We wouldn't want to lose anything along the way. So you would want to take a break if you notice that you lose interest in most of the things that you do. You're just doing it to just keep going because you don't want to drop what you started. You would want to really take a break. Maybe what you started at first, that excitation and the zeal you had made you commit to things that you did not, things that you couldn't take all in a time. Maybe you would want to take things bit by bit. So if you notice that the excitement, the zeal and the excitation, the excitation, enthusiasm and zeal that you have in the beginning of this month compared to now is reducing, is decreasing. You would want to take a break just to, in a day if you do, if you have certain activities, let's say you carry out 10 activities in a day, you would want to reduce it to maybe 8 or 7. That's a good start. Then you take things little by little. Let's take for an example. Maybe you read the Quran, it depends on how many juz you read in a day, and then you supplicate, which is very easy supplications. You can do your supplications when you're doing the house chores, maybe when you're doing the dishes, when you're sleeping. What when you're just sitting down doing nothing, you can just be supplicating. That, that is very easy to do. Or maybe and you pray in a waffle, then you cook, you um prepare that is preparing the iftar, set that is preparing the iftar, setting the table. There's just so much going on. In a day, you'll see that you have less than an hour to yourself, especially in Ramadan. Especially if you have a very large family, that is kind of exhausting. So you would want to split, maybe have division of labor, just get more people involved into doing what you do every day. Maybe if you carry out all these things in a day, you can decide to maybe today, okay, I will cook, but you guys will help me set the table. That, after you finish cooking, just let them set the table for you. That is actually a good idea. You might have a few minutes to yourself. You can plan your activities throughout the day and don't forget to leave a space for you to take a nap, especially after the road to just before Asr. That is a very nice time for one to have a nap. We don't want to reach a point where one reaches the breaking point. We don't want to have mental emotional and the worst physical breakdown. So just do everything in such a way that you wouldn't want to work out yourself or get worked up. And then secondly, it is somehow related to the first point is taking things easy. Let's take for example, reading the Quran. We've talked about taking a break. Then let's see how you read the Quran. There are some people so mashallah and Ramadan, they try to complete, they complete the Quran, not just once, but twice or thrice in a month. That is um, really encouraging to do, 
And if you guys do it, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you reward. Whoever does that in Ramadan, whoever tries to complete the Quran, even if it's once, twice or thrice in Ramadan, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you reward. But you would want to reconsider the way you read the Quran. Because some people really read it very fast. They want to reach, we have set goals. It is very good for one to set goals but and to reach those goals. But do you really want to reach those goals one out or do you really want to reach those goals excited let's take for example maybe you read five hizib every day five hizib okay it will take you 12 days for you to complete the quran and how many days do you have in ramadan 29 maybe 30 days you can complete the quran in thrice in a month that is a good thing but how do you read the quran some they just want to sit and complete those practices in a go and some they try to like do it little by little maybe after praying fajr they have one just maybe Dhuhr, they will have one after each prayer they read one they read one his and some after maybe they just plan it accordingly how it is best for them so when reading it, how do you read it? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Quran read the Quran appropriately, recite it appropriately. You don't just want to, because I have set a target, I want to read five dozen and I have a lot going on, so I'll be reading it very fast. You miss out on some words, you miss out on your reward, you are eating up the words to the point that you feel, when you hear somebody reciting the Quran very fast, you feel as if they're eating up the words. I'll be like, Ya Allah, are you even reciting it? Or are you eating up the words? You would want to recite it a little bit slowly. There are people who cannot recite the Quran like very slowly. I'm not asking you to recite it like slowly, like Khusari, but you can recite it like Shireen's speed. He recites it, not he's not speeding, but he's, the speed is safe for everyone. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to, like, I don't know how to specify how you recite it. You have Qusari, we all know he, his recitations, he's an amazing reciter. Everybody who's run to the Quran, you would want to listen to him because he recites everything out. You hear everything and you just get it the way he pronounces every word. You have to get it. But when you listen to um, Shireen, he recites normally, like just normal. His recitation is very nice and He's a little bit, fa he's faster than Khusari, but it's not that dangerous fast. So you would want to just visit those, visit, just check out their recitations and see. And you can even recite a little bit faster than Shireen and be on the safe side and still not eat up the words of the Quran. Because unless we don't want to go against Qaratil Quran Tartila. And also, our Nawafil, the prayers that we pray, maybe during Taraweh. We want to reach, we have a certain, we don't want to get tired and we don't, and we have a certain goal. We want to, maybe we want to recite two hizib in Taraweh, so, and we don't want to get tired, so we recite very fast to reach that goal. You can maybe reduce it to hizib and a half, maybe, and recite with the normal speed. And still you recite it beautifully. Because the Quran, you have to recite it beautifully for you to earn the word. We know every word in the Quran, you have a reward for it. When you recite the Quran, for every word you recite, for every half, for every letter, you have a reward. So you would want, you don't want to eat up your reward for reciting the Quran very fast. I actually tried something which really works for me, and I hope you will try doing that. When I was reading, when I was just reading to reach my target, I lost focus. In connecting with the verses of the Quran that I was reading, I tried it. I tried it this morning. I lost focus with connecting with the verses of the Quran that I was reading the previous days. I was reading like back then when I was reading the Quran because I just want the target was the only thing on my mind which I was focusing on, and I forgot to look at the other factors that are connected with reading the Quran. You have to connect with it. You have to listen to it while you recite it, and you have to just recite it. There are a lot of things connected to reciting the Quran. So when I tried to reduce the speed, to just recite it with, to reduce the speed a bit, 
I'm connected with lots of things. And I, when you're speeding, if you're reading the Quran, even if you make a mistake, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even notice that you've made a mistake because you've eaten up all the words. But if you're reciting with normal speed, not the dangerous speed, you can't, when you make a mistake, you correct yourself, you connect with the Quran, you connect with the verses, and you, you just listen to yourself reciting. That is very good. And even during Tarawih, you, when you have a target, everybody has their own target that they pray during Tarawih. So you would, we all want to attain, we all want to achieve those goals. So when you have a fixed, uh, a fixed portion of the Quran that you read every day, and say two is the least, which most people read in Tarawih um, is um, a, a hizm. If you have, let's say, three hizm you read every day in Tarawih, and you want to reach those those that target every day, and you, but you don't want to get tired, so we read very fast. We forget about other things connected to Tarawih as well, reciting the Quran beautifully, praying, making dua and even having focus in prayer like real focus you lose focus you just you are worried about how much is left for me to reach my target you lose focus as well here so whatever it is that you do you would want to take things easy if you have lots that you do reduce it a bit if you do if you have 10 activities that you carry out in a day you might want to reduce it to maybe eight or seven to be on a safer side that is just it pertaining uh taking things easy and then the last one which is the hardest one is patience and anger patience and taming anger ramadan is like the training ground for us to practice and nurture to practice develop and nurture patience when we fast during the day we are exercising patience perseverance and endurance by abstaining from food, drink, and other sexual desires. We show steadfastness when we protect our eyes, our hands, our tongues, our minds, and our ears from sins, and striving to do anything that pleases Allah. So, not just that, there's more to patience. Are you patient with your family members? Are you patient with your siblings? Are you patient with your spouses? Do you get easily angered? It is said that a hungry man is an angry man. When you are hungry, every little thing just gets you angry, gets the best of you, to make you angry. So, it is very hard, yes, it is very hard, trust me, I know this personally, it is very hard for one to be patient in Ramadan. But you would want to attain that word of patience also. You don't want to miss out on that. When I say you tame your anger and you patient, patience isn't tolerating a situation because you cannot do a single thing about it. Patience is when you have the full, cap full capability, full potential to handle a situation, but you still choose to, be pa to not do anything. Rather, be patient about the situation. Not because you can't do anything. You have full potential to handle that situation, but because you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you for not reacting towards that whatever situation it is, that is true patience. And when it comes sincerely from the heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you on that. So these are these two things that are really like intertwined patience and taming one's anger. I tried taming my anger and not getting angry throughout the whole day and trust me it wasn't the easiest the easiest thing to do. So what I started with, first off, I started by ignoring almost everything around me because I have siblings and you know, when you have siblings and you have lots to do during the day, you end up getting angry at a point. So I tried to ignore them at first. I was not in their business because I don't want them to make me angry at first. So I thought like, I'm not just being patient, but I'm ignoring. And, and patience is having the ability to handle a situation when you have full capacity to handle a situation and not do anything about it. So I told myself, I'm not being patient, but I'm being ignorant. I'm ignoring their situation. So I indulged myself into their business. I started, I sent into them. And they got me pretty bad, but I tried myself. I like, tried not even to show it to them that I was angry. 
you know like it's not like i am legit angry something that will make you be angry for days no it's not something that will make you just angry at that moment i tried my very best to see that i did it was a bit hard but i would say we all can do it and just let me know in the comment section if you have tried this or if there's anything you've tried that I've said in this video, just let me know of your experience and how you were able to do it, especially this concerning, especially concerning patience. And if you haven't yet tried anything, maybe taking a break, doing things little by little, and uh, being patient and taking your anger, let me know in the comment section if you have tried that. How was your experience and what tips, to, and if you have tips to share with us. And if you haven't, well, Try it, let me know in the comment section as well how you were able to do it, how was it for you? And let's just see how we keep things, how things keep going from here. As I keep saying in my videos, if you have anything you would want me to make videos on, just let me know down below in the comment section. Type it and we'll see where we go from there. Like, comment, subscribe and keep sharing it to other people. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.